Hi, in this video tutorial we are going to look into creating a navigable scene in Unity for virtual reality. I am in Unity already and in my project I have a scene with a terrain, some houses and uh, we navigate this scene a little bit, we find a crashed spaceship in the middle, some dead trees, we have a skybox, which is overcast, and we have a directional light. That's our sun providing us with some shadows. I have already imported uh, some assets uh, into this project. Let's have a quick look at them. So the houses come from the 3D warehouse. It's this Asuma Tower house from 1966. I have also imported Lighting Box 2, which provides post-processing effects uh, in VR. So as of November 2017, uh, there is a post-processing stack out, uh, it's free from Unity, uh, but it's version 1 and that does not yet uh, support post-processing effects for VR. With Lighting Box we have a beta of a new post-processing stack available and that works for VR. I'm also using the Bird Flock bundle to make our scene more lively. And uh, while the other two assets are not essential for the VR, uh, this one is. Um, it's called VR Arc Teleporter, and it provides us with the teleportation uh, functionality we seek for this project. And it also comes uh, with the Steam VR plugin, which allows us to view Unity scenes uh, in VR. So Steam um, is uh, a software platform and um, a part of it is Steam VR, which um, then drives um, VR headsets such as the HTC Vive or Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So in order to explore your scene in VR you would obviously want to have some of these headsets just to create the scene which could then be displayed on a computer which has uh, such a headset uh, attached and Steam installed. You do not need the headset so the scene can be created uh, just as well. It is though suggested that you use Unity for PC because uh, SteamVR for Apple is, to my best knowledge right now, uh, not really available. I do not have an Apple computer for testing though, so I'm using Windows here. So back to our scene. Um, if we inspect it a little bit closer, we see that uh, where the geometry of the buildings hits the ground, um, a little bit of uh, post-processing in the form of ambient occlusion could be useful. In order to get that, we go to Windows, Lighting Box, we get uh, a new interface, and um, it allows us to turn effects on. So if we do that, um, immediately we get uh, post-processing. We see that the color correction was applied and we see that ambient occlusion was applied. So Lighting Box has a few settings. I um, would invite you to, to try them just pointing out a few important ones. Camera mode all uh, is a suggested setting in order to get uh, 
the post-processing effects uh, on all cameras. We are going to add a new one uh, for VR and if we set that to all then the post-processing uh, will be applied to this. If we want to have a skybox uh, material displayed it needs to show up here in the skybox material. In this particular scene it's a skybox from the standard assets. It's the overcast to skybox in order to get it there, if it isn't, uh, we just drag it here. We have some effects like volumetric lighting and sun shafts. I already see them applied. Let's say I switch off the sun shafts, move behind the buildings, see that uh, the shafts are there or not, depending on us switching them on or off. We also have the option to do color correction. So here we use a CES neutral is also an option. And in the screen menu we get anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion. So off and on. I think we will want to have it on. Each of these settings can be expanded and has uh, some uh, op options for you to, to tune it. I'm quite happy with what I see here. So I leave it as it is. When we want to use VR, we need a special camera rig. So our main camera can and should be deactivated first and then uh, we go to the already imported VR Arc Teleporter asset uh, in our assets folder, go to prefabs and pick uh, either VR Dash, VR Fade or VR Instant Player uh, example. So I'm going to use the Fade player example, and when I drag it into the scene, uh, Unity can uh, freeze briefly. Uh, it does that now in my scene, and the reason is I have not calibrated my play area. Um, so when you use a VR headset, uh, then you are asked to calibrate your play area so you can move around safely in the space. I have not done that and that leads Unity to freeze. So uh, in order to get rid of this bug, I just select a arbitrary play area and then Unity responds again. So what we see here is our VR camera rig in the position where our VR will start. If we do not want to have it in this particular position, we can uh, move it around, say for instance a little bit further back from uh, the buildings. And uh, we can also look into seeing uh, what our VR camera is going to see in the beginning by expanding the VR player example and then the camera head and the camera eye and that gives us a preview of uh, the camera. We're going to get that in game view. So as you see the camera is placed precisely on the ground which is actually what we want to do because the headset is calibrated for the ground usually so when you pick it up you have the correct distance you have your head has from the real ground uh, to the virtual ground if the prefab for some reason say your terrain is a little bit slopey is underneath oops sorry should always select the whole uh, group 
then you can move it slightly above ground. It should always be slightly above ground, never below ground. So when that's done, we basically have all the functionality we need. I'll save my scene and um, can now, as I have a VR headset attached and Steam installed, hit play. So my headset is a mixed reality headset. Um, what opens is the mixed reality portal. I put that down and I am getting a message from Steam uh, with some recommended settings, which I accept all. And Unity has switched to the game view. It already gives us a preview of uh, our scene as it's displayed in the headset and a little Steam VR window has popped up. We see the headset is ready and we see that the controllers are not tracking. They are green means they are powered up. If you have an HTC Vive you're going to see two more symbols which are the so-called lighthouses and uh, they are used for tracking. So I pick up my headset now and as you see the uh, image is moving. I will try to put it in a place so that it sees my joysticks. So I look at the house and if I press the trigger button I get an arc that gives me a target position. So can you see that arc? Hopefully you can. And if I let loose of the trigger it moves me there. So this is how you can basically teleport in the scene and then as you move your headset, you can also look around and enjoy the VR scene you have created. I guess the audio is now a little bit noisy. That's because the fans of my laptops have spooled up. I will stop the scene right now and also close the port, um, mixed reality portal and that is basically it you could if you are happy with your creation um, build your project for Windows as a standalone application or if you just use this in say your design process um, save it work a little bit more on your design uh, update the models and then check them again in VR